Hi there and welcome to Planet Zoo. Today we're back in the Starter Habitat Zoo with the launch of the Grasslands Pack DLC tomorrow. Frontier has kindly provided me with an early access for the pack. So I've delved right in and created seven brand new starter habitats for the seven new habitat animals that will be introduced in this pack. A big thank you to Frontier for that. This means the new starter habitats are ready to go right at launch tomorrow, which I know some people really appreciate the speedy availability of the starter habitats. So starter habitats, if you're new here, you may be wondering what that is. Basically, Starter Habitats is a collection of ready-made basic enclosures and they've been created with beginner players in mind. These are enclosures that have been built to be optimised to cover all basic needs, so they're right size for each animal and they have correct levels of fauna and flora, water, terrain and hard shelter needs are all met. All habitats in this collection also don't require any DLC to use them. I've created these with only unthemed base game pieces, so they can be placed right away in franchise and challenge modes without needing specific species or theming research done first. That's the Starter Habitat series in a nutshell. Every time there's a new DLC, I get straight back into it and create habitats for the new animals. So let's get into the Grasslands pack. First up is the Blue Wildebeest. This is a nice grasslands animal hailing from Southern Africa. We already have the Black Wildebeest in the game, so I wasn't sure how different the Blue would be. Size-wise, it's about the same as the Black ones, but the Blue Wildebeest have much more distinctive coloration and markings, much more like the Wildebeest you'd see in a typical zoo. I would say it's a nice addition for the game. You can house up to 20 Blue Wildebeests together. The starter enclosure for them is quite large to accommodate their size requirements. With the theming, for all of the new starter habitats, I've kept to a common theme across all of these, going with the bleached wood and white plaster theming for most of them. For the blue wildebeest, I've put in this tiered effect to break up the landscape a bit, so it's not just one big long field. The danger with the grasslands animals, most of them do require a lot of, well, grassland space as you'd expect. So I've tried to break this up with the plaster boundary walls and such. It's a little bit more than just a flat expanse of grassland. For the barrier around this enclosure, this is a partial custom barrier at the front and I've gone with the stone walling at the back. This is a design choice rather than for the animal's needs. I just like the effect of the sort of plain coloured stone over some of the other more unnatural barriers for this type of enclosure. The only thing to be aware of with this is that the stone barrier is a higher tier of barrier. I think it's tier 5, so that is quite high on the list of barriers. It's normally used to accommodate some of the more bulky animals. It's not strictly necessary for something like a wildebeest. It was a design choice and if you're not happy with this type of barrier, it's quite easy to change this out for one of the lower tiers. The hard shelter design at the back here, I've made this with natural wood pieces, plaster and I've gone with the corrugated roof. I've tried to make this look quite natural and it's quite open and airy because we're accommodating animals that are used to hot weather. This one, it has two sleeping quarters and then there's a central section where the entrance gate is. So that's it for the wildebeest. Let's move on to the next one which is the caracal. Caracal is a wildcat. It's actually a wildcat that I've never heard of before. It is nice sometimes when Planet Zoo introduces you to animals that you didn't even know existed. This little cat reminds me a lot of the Eurasian lynx in the game. Could be it's a reskin from the Eurasian lynx, but it's still a nice animal in its own right. Caracals are found mostly in Africa and the Middle East. So again, I've gone with this bleached desert type of theme in here. For the enclosure, I've gone with a fully enclosed design on this one. Sometimes I do like to play around and see if it's possible to do a fully enclosed design because you do get that sometimes in zoos where everything's fully contained. Like the wildebeest, this is half custom and half standard barrier type. There's a fully enclosed inside section and a partially outside section using the mesh barrier for a wire roof. This is really open at the front with the big glass panes and the section back here inside this gives them a little bit of quiet space for some sleeping. I know these animals can get quite nervous and having that big open front, I need to put a place in here for them to retreat to if it starts getting too much for them. Up in the front, I've put some of the climbing frames in to entertain the crowds. And I've also got a raised vegetation bedding border. 
This is actually made from a climb up a wood piece here. The cats tend to spend a lot of their time walking along this section mostly. Typical cat behaviour. You give them something nice like the climbing frame to play with and they just end up sitting walking along the border at the back. Hey ho. Space wise, I'd say these cats require probably about a medium amount of space in the enclosure. They only live in really small family groups, so one male, one female, plus any babies they may have. It's not like the wildebeest where there's 20 odd of them. It wasn't as much of a challenge with this one to make it interesting. Something interesting with this actually, the rock work here. Now I've embedded this into the wall and I wanted to create a feature wall here. And actually, for a lot of the grassland starter habitats, I had a theme going where I'd spent a chunk of time creating a feature panel. And this has the tiny, tiny faux rocks embedded into the plaster. It created a really nice effect. But when I tested these in challenge mode, unfortunately, even though they are tagged as base game and Planet Zoo themed pieces, the tiny rock pieces were still counting as a themed item, hence locking all of the blueprints out of franchise and challenge mode. Actually, I have kept a blueprint of this because I definitely will use this in other builds. We'll just take a quick look back here. So yeah, I made this feature wall effect with the faux small rocks. And I was really happy with how this looks, considering it's a base game piece. It sort of looks like the cobblestone walling effect that you get with some of the DLCs without actually having to buy a DLC to get that effect. So I was really pleased with it. And then unfortunately, it just doesn't work. Not for the starter habitats, at least. I will definitely be using this in some of my other builds that aren't part of the starter series. Watch your space. This will definitely be back. Anyway, with the caracal and quite a few of the other grassland habitats, I had to spend a couple of hours redoing all of these blooming wall pieces, removing thousands of tiny small rocks to ensure these habitats are usable without research. For some of them, it looked a little bland when I removed all the rocks, so I still wanted the feature effect. Instead, I've used the smallest desert rock pieces that are in the game, which, although it's not as good as the tiny rock wall, it does have a similar effect I was going for. Right, let's move on. Next is the emu enclosure. You can certainly tell I was going for a theme here. There's more bleached wards and stone. <laughs> Emus, you only get those in Australia and this lighter natural wood effect fits in well with a lot of the established Australian theming. So I think this bleached stone thing actually fits in pretty well with the emus. The emus, they're a lot smaller than I thought they would be. I thought they'd be similar to the size of the ostriches in the game, but they are. They're about a middle between the ostrich and the southern cassowary. I was hoping the emus might be able to give the ostriches a run for their money in the races that I do, but hmm, not sure how they're going to do now since they're so small. Ostriches might still have the upper hand. Anyway, enclosure wise, you can fit six emus in an enclosure, plus the babies, of course. Considering there's a lot less of them, it's about equivalent to what I needed for the wildebeest. I guess these guys need a little bit more space to run around. For the hard shelter, I've got two smaller sized shelters in here, using that bleached wood and corrugated metal roofing again. And for the barrier, it's a half custom barrier again. So stone at the back and the viewing area at the front uses bleached wood and glass panels. Just two tiers breaking up the landscape on this one. I wanted to give the emus just that little extra space at the front to stretch the legs. Right, I think that's all I need to say about emus. So let's move on to our next animal, which is the maned wolf. Now, with the maned wolf enclosure, I have to say I'm a little disappointed with the options available for creating the maned wolf enclosure. Normally with the starter habitats, I have a lot of self-imposed restrictions to work with. I understand that and I'm okay with that. But for the main wolves, this is one of my toughest challenges, I think, with some of the restrictions that are imposed by the game. Main wolves hail from the grasslands of South America, which I, you know, I didn't even realise there was grasslands in South America. Naive of me, of course. I'm just used to working with rainforest, tropical, wet, uh, swampy kind of biomes for South America. So to come to a grasslands for South America, I really struggled. The game options for creating a grasslands in South America is super limited. 
There's maybe two or three choices for vegetation, and there isn't any actual bushes or grassland vegetation pieces available for this, so I was incredibly limited in what I could use for the enclosure, hence why I have snuck in a couple of tropical plants in to break up the landscape a bit. It still doesn't feel quite right. It doesn't help either that for the terrain, the main wall's requirements are about 90% long and short grass, with a tiny bit of soil allowed. Hence why the enclosure is so sparse and very, very green. This definitely isn't my best work, let's put it that way. I've done what I can with this at this time, but I may revisit this one soon, see if I can't make it a little more inspiring. Anyway, I really can't say much about the main wolves. Let's move on to the next one. So, what have we got here? This is the nine-banded armadillo. Now, I really enjoyed creating an enclosure for the armadillo. They're a tiny little creature, and they really don't need a lot of space at all. This is probably one of the smallest exhibits I've done, bar maybe the tortoises. Armadillos are a North and South American animal, so I was able to go all out with the desert vegetation here. You can tell a huge amount of detail has gone into modelling the armadillo, and it is one of my favourite additions to the Grasslands pack. So much detailing in their little scaling, even the big fairy underbelly. It's so detailed, it's done so well. So, well done Planet Zoo on this one. Really happy with the armadillo. The enclosure I've created for them. It's about 50% hard shelter and 50% outside space. It's almost entirely custom barrier. So, a lot more of that natural wood and a little bit of plaster mixed in. Just a note on this one, it is meeting the animal's needs currently, but once enrichment pieces are added, it might need expanding out of the back a little bit if the requirement dips there. Alright, let's move on to the next animal, and that is the red-necked wallaby. It was such a joy building the enclosure for the wallabies. This is just a really joyful creature that is full of character. The funny thing with the wallabies, for such a small creature, they can jump really high, hence why the barriers are so tall. Honestly, when I read the space requirements and saw that they need three foot blooming walls, I was like, nah, that's gotta be a mistake, that's a typo. But they really can jump that high. That was fun actually when I first put the wallabies in and they're jumping all over the blooming hard shelter. So, like, yeah, okay, if you want to jump on the roof there, it's fine. Don't worry, they can't get they can't jump from there over the fence, so at least there's that. But yeah, occasionally you will see them take this really massive leap onto the top of the hard shelter. Maybe they're just curious what's up there, I don't know. For this enclosure, I've got a fully custom barrier over this. I did originally start out with having the half stone at the back, but because the barrier is so high, it did look very odd having that amount of stone. So I replaced this with a plaster one and with that wood finishing around the top just to give a bit of detail. For the terrain in here, I've broken this up into two sections. You've got the sleeping quarter at the back and at the front we've got some of the food stations to entertain the guests. If you do end up using this enclosure yourself, there's plenty of room up front as well for placing enrichment items, so more entertainment there as well. Now in game, the wallabies are friendly enough that you can make a walkthrough enclosure for them and I did consider doing that, but I'm not sure whether walking enclosures need additional research to use them. I've stuck with tradition and made this into viewable enclosures only for the Starter Habitat series. Size wise, the enclosure itself is quite big. Now you can house up to 30 wallabies together, plus the babies. That's probably why it needs to be so big. Be warned, these guys are quite prolific breeders, hence why there's so many babies in here already. It really doesn't take long to reach the maximum. Still, I'm going to say, along with the armadillos, the wallaby is one of my top three creatures in the grasslands. Which brings me nicely on to our next enclosure, and this is actually my favourite one, the striped hyena. When I started building this enclosure, it took me several attempts to come up with something that looked right and I started to get worried thinking it was going to be a repeat of the main wolves. The striped hyenas need a lot of space considering you can only have up to six of them in an enclosure and I was like, oh, this is a lot of space needed. The first couple of attempts I did at making something, it really didn't look right, it looked very empty. I took a little time out and did some research to see what kind of space do these guys exist in in real life. They are the quiet and reserved cousin of the spotted hyena, which we already have in game. They live on the edges of the grasslands using rocky outcrops for their dens, and they do live a very quiet existence, mostly scavenging. 
so with that knowledge in hand, it helped me come up with an appropriate landscape for them here. I've got the rocky outcrop at the back, and that gives way to the start of the grasslands here. The great thing about the striped hyenas is that although they need a lot of space, they're quite forgiving with the flora and fauna. So I was able to add a lot of vegetation for this enclosure, and that helps bring it to life. The barrier, this is all custom barrier. For the hard shelter, this is just a simple plaster building with big one-way windows in here. So it's darkened on the inside to avoid bothering the hyenas when they're sleeping. The hyena enclosure at my local zoo has something similar to this, except for the sleeping quarters in that one, they're much smaller than this is. But with the huge hip pockets and planet zoo, small areas like that don't work so well. So it's a little more open in here than I wanted it to be, but I've kind of tried to match this to what you would see in a real life zoo. This was one of my favourite enclosures to work on with the Grasslands pack. So much choice in terms of grass vegetation I could use, and the hyenas are very happy with a lot of sand and soil terrain, which is much easier to work with than having just grass terrain for emphasising the landscape. I also adore the variety of trees and bushes available with the Africa Grasslands biome, so in comparison to the main wolf, this was a much easier challenge to work with. Now, that is all seven of the new enclosures I've built, but with the Grasslands pack, this was the first time I came very close to creating an exhibit blueprint with the DLC. Traditionally, I don't include exhibit habitats in the Starter Habitat series because they're a lot easier to work with and don't require much faff to get them up and running. And well, that's the whole point of the Starter Habitat series is I'm easing the pain of creating all these habitats um, that people do themselves. But we can't talk about grasslands without mentioning the wonderful addition of butterflies as the exhibit animal with this pack. I was so close to adding a butterfly exhibit with this set. Common sense prevailed in that any exhibit with the starter habitat set isn't adding much value as the animal habitats do. So I'm saving that and I will do a highly detailed butterfly blueprint in the coming weeks. It'll be standalone and won't be part of the starter habitat series. Anyway, that is all seven new habitats. I hope they're useful for everyone and help you get into the Grasslands pack a little quicker than creating these all from scratch yourself. Thanks so much for watching. Bye for now.